court. Okay, so um, we're gonna talk about, um, like we're gonna go into a new, a new area today. And um, it, it is, it's exciting because what I am hearing God do and talk about is um, more around, I guess, kind of business strategy um, being able to take a look at yourself, your business, um, and just understand how to operate in the fullness of who you are and who he is. And so he, um, he started talking to me about our gifts and our talents. And so that's where we're going to explore today, because, um, it's kind of one of those areas I think we talk around or, or talk about, and you hear people talk about it, but, um, not quite sure, you know, how does this apply to me? What, what is, what is really, you know, what is my gift? What is my, uh, what's that edge that makes me different? And, um, and so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about talent, what, you know, and, and um, skills and, and then our spiritual gifts. And I think it's very interesting to, to talk about spiritual gifts in the arena of business. Um, because those gifts are often really talked about only in the sense of the church, you know, in the four walls of the church. And, but that God has every intention of those being things that are displayed in your workplace or, you know, what we call our marketplace, right? And, but being able to understand what those things bring to the table helps you understand how you are designed and anointed and how you are distinguished in your area in you know in the in the influence that you have and so one thing that um, i think we do have to start with is is differentiating talent and our spiritual gifts okay so the thing about a talent is that everybody has talent okay i mean everybody has talent we know lakita is a great singer <laughs> singing is a talent <laughs> you know we we know uh, some of us speak those things that be not as exactly. though they are exactly. talent not gift I, I i can hear i can hear clearly what you're saying talent you didn't say gift <laughs> <laughs> but you know everybody a talent is something that is part of kind of our human ability you know some people are born with great talent in sports and you know some people are great are very talented dancers or singers or you know writers speakers these are all things that are great talents and so when we um a lot of times in, in the business arena what you're seeing which is why the the business can be kind of difficult to grasp for people sometimes because a lot of what you're seeing are personality driven success, okay? Meaning that you're watching somebody's talent on display, okay? And that if your talent isn't my talent, then it's hard sometimes for me to understand how to have the success based on what you're telling me, okay? And, and so that can, this is why systems are so important because it is not talent or personality specific, okay? And so we're gonna get into some of those things, but I just thought this was just interesting for God to start off with because what I see is him now moving us into this area of understanding how to function the best that you possibly can in in your business and and valuing the gifts and the talents he's given you that you don't compare you know we've just come off of talking about competition and so i cannot compare the way that i run a business to the way someone else runs a business i cannot do that because we are different we have different talents and different combinations of gifts today is going to be more of an introductory okay y'all cuz we're going to talk about this for the next you know couple times at least but um, talent is something even a non-believer can have because it's a human, it's an ability. So they don't, you don't have to 
um, you know, have a level of faith in God to use your talent as a writer if you're talented at writing. The differentiation between our talent and our spiritual gift is that our spiritual gift is given by the Holy Spirit specifically. It is empowered by the Holy Spirit specifically. And sometimes our talents and our gifts can be very similar. Sometimes they're not. Okay. We saw the, the um, example of that with Bezalel. And um, Bezalel did not, it didn't say he had any background in craftsmanship. Okay. So that wasn't a talent necessarily he was known for. And the Holy Spirit rested on him and gave him that talent. Okay. But then there are some people who they're talented in teaching, let's say. And then the Holy Spirit then imparts a gift of teaching. And now that teaching comes to a whole nother level. Okay, so there's these combinations going on that are very unique, but the spiritual gift is this is something that God has reserved through the Holy Spirit. So you only get that through the Holy Spirit. Okay, talent can only take you so far because it is based on human ability. And and so your talents are things they can be honed in through practice. They can be learned you know, the, those kind of things. But, um, you know, talent is the one thing I think about, uh, I don't remember what is the name of that movie. Um, the, the aliens, they were fighting the aliens, Will Smith and the other dude, what's his name? The men in black, men in black. Men in black. Yeah. yeah. And the <laughs> thing about when, when Will started on, you know, working with the dude, he was like the difference between him and him and the other guy was that he makes this look good. He said, right? He said, I make this look good. <laughs> and see, talent makes what you do look easy. It makes it look good. All right. And that's why somebody else on the outside, they could take a look and they're like, man, you know, the superstars, the, 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 um, you know, the actors, the, this, this is talent that they've honed and it makes everything look good and easy and, and easy to do. That, that town is what you're born with. Your gift, on the other hand, is this part of your, your expression of you that lets people know you didn't do this by yourself. Talent can be awarded on its own and it is, it, it is applauded on a human level, but the spiritual gift lets people know it wasn't just you. It is apparent in such a way that it's not just you. So it is a separator between you and the rest of the world um, in, in who you are. And God, he said to me, you know, I am as vast as there are people, meaning that there are, because every single person has a different uh, um, configuration <laughs> of talent and gifts. Okay. God says, I'm as vast as there are people. You would have to know intimately every single person and all their combinations to even begin to know God. That there's so many ways this all can express itself. And that's the beauty. He wanted to make sure that your combination was going to make you stand out. Your combination was going to be a light to draw people. So the first thing I want you to, to understand about that is that to, to get about this whole concept is that it is not whether you think you're talented in specific areas of this business or not does not matter <laughs> okay talent again can be taught skills can be taught they can be refined what god designed for you to bring uniqueness into this business is your gift or gifts okay cuz there are more than one and most people possess more than one um, and so we're going to talk about, I, I'm just going to show you where those gifts are, the, the majority of them that are listed in the Bible. Now, I don't, you know, 
I think there's a lot of ways that the, these all can can express themselves. OK, but I'm just going to help you to see what some of these these gifts um the major ones are defined as and then we're going to take a walk in you learning what some of your gifts are okay and how those gifts play out in business okay um so god's trying to give you a better glimpse into you and why you're equipped for this why you are equipped for this the way you are right now in your seat Okay, <laughs> so the, but the first thing that we have to do, we want to value our individuality and, uh, and value our collectiveness as well, um, because this is, it, it's so interesting to me how God has begun to draw this parallel of church and business for, for me, you know, what we're building here. Um, even in, in our own, the Accelerate tribe, the, the collective of RVPs that, you know, all of us bring something to the table in terms of helping each other make their businesses work. And, you know, he, as I, as we read this next passage right here, we realize this is God's intention for the church, but it wasn't just that it's the church in the four walls that his intention for his people. So when we think about the church, we think about his people to work together. And so I'm going to start with 1 Corinthians 12 and 12 through 26. And this is in the message translation. And we're going to go up before that in a little bit, but right now we're going to start here. And it says, um, let's see, 1 Corinthians 12. 12 through 26 in the message. And it says, you can easily enough see how this kind of thing works by looking no further than your own body. Your body has many parts, limbs, organs, cells, but no matter how many parts you can name, you're still one body. It's actually the same with Christ. By means of his one spirit, we all said goodbye to our partial and piecemeal lives. We each used to independently call our own shots, but then we entered into a large and integrated life in which he has the final say in everything. Now, here's the interesting piece about this, because I realized when God moved me to that, to this, this whole concept, and I don't think I identified it as something um, I didn't I really identify what was going on because, okay, as an RVP, we call our shots, okay? We determine how we want to build a business, you, you, you know, your promotion guidelines and, you know, what system, what play you want to run with your teams and, you know, and things like that. And so we are used to when you get to this, that level, at least of RVP, that you are, you're now become your island, so to speak. And that we see this play out in, in other teams in which if somebody is, you know, blowing and going, as they say, and putting up a bunch of numbers and things like that, it's very common that they don't share everything they're doing with everybody else, okay? They will give you part of it, <laughs> okay, but not all of it because they are their island. They want to keep that for themselves and i i mean listen <laughs> there was there was time i was the same way because you want to protect what it, you know on the instance of you just you want to protect what you're doing and what you have but then as god started to call this whole accelerate group together you know it started with me literally coaching somebody else from a whole nother hierarchy <laughs> that I then realize I'm going to have to spill the beans. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I can't hold anything back. And I, I did not even understand that that switch had to take place in my mind it, because I was just so used to operating in a certain environment. 
And that was just what I'd see now is that was the beginning stages, <laughs> you know, of what he says, okay, I've given you this. And so this is what this passage is talking about here. We've been used to operating a business on our own. You having to fill in the blanks for everything that's needed in the business. And there's a lot of aspects of this thing. You know, um, I'm not great at promoting events all the time. I forget. This is why I want people on band so it can remind you because I will forget. Okay. <laughs> I'm never, I, those are things I'm not great at. You know, you have to know how to talk with people, how to discern body language, how to think past somebody's, there's understanding the numbers of it. How do you get equity, you know, back office stuff. There's all these pieces to the puzzle and we've been taught, we got to handle it all and be able in order to have a successful business. So <laughs> that's where this comes in. And he says, up until now, We've been kind of piecemealing it, it says, our lives. We've been putting together as much as we possibly could by ourselves. And so then he says, we used to, oh, it says like, we used to independently call our own shots and says, this is what we proclaimed in word and action when we were baptized, that he's saying, now we switch. We're not used to calling our own shots anymore. He says, then we entered into a large and integrated life, a large integrated life and that is a beautiful thing because on our own we cannot enlarge on our own we cannot enlarge you can't hold enough by yourself and so he says we entered into a large and integrated life okay and, and so, and, and now, and it says in which he or God has the final say so. So now our final say so is not just because I say so. Now it is because we're going to do this God's way. Okay. And man, did I, I mean, that was just a revelation itself. Cause I was like, Lord, I never really thought about the fact that you could run, that the business structure you desire that to be like this church structure, in a sense, that the environment in which we grow a business is the same environment you would grow the four walls of the church. Because in, in his mind, there's actually no difference. So he says, okay, each of us is now a part of his resurrection body refreshed and sustained at one fountain his spirit where we all come to drink so we are common in that we all have now we all have the same resource we have that in common this is we all come to drink the old labels we once used to identify ourselves labels like jew or greek labels like um dream team Pinkard hierarchy, the movement, the, the right, the the labels that we had for ourselves, sl slave or free, are no longer useful. Now I'm not I'm not you know down talking having your you know your team name or nothing like that. All I'm saying is that when you take that and you say this is mine, and and this is all that belongs and this is all that I care for, that's what he's saying. That can't be our only, our, our only uh, circle, you know. It, he says they're no longer useful. We need something larger, more comprehensive. I want you to think about how all this makes you more significant, not less. So he's saying the fact that we are a collective does not take away from who you are. As a ma matter of fact, it means you mean more. Okay, a body isn't just a single part blown up into something huge. <laughs> it's not just one hierarchy. <laughs> it's not just one. He says it's not just one part that's blown into something huge. It's all the different but similar parts arranged and functioning together. 
if foot said I'm not elegant like hand embellished with rings I guess I don't belong to this body would that make it so if ear said I'm not beautiful like I transparent and expressive I don't deserve a place on the head would you want to remove it from the body if the body was all eye, how could it hear? If all ear, how could it smell? As it is, we see that God has carefully placed each part of the body right where he wanted it. <laughs> right where he wanted it. But I also want you to think about how this keeps your significance from getting blown up into self-importance. So he's like, you got, there's a balance here. Don't think of yourself as less because you are part of this bigger body and this whole body needs you to function. But don't think that you're the only part of the body. <laughs> don't think one is more important than the other, right? Um, for no matter how significant you are, it is only because of what you are part of. It doesn't matter how significant, how great your numbers are by themselves, how big your... It's not because it doesn't matter. It's about what you are a part of. An enormous eye or a gigantic hand wouldn't be a body, but a monster. <laughs> what we have is one body with many parts, each its proper size and its proper place. No part is important on its own. Can you imagine eye telling hand, get lost, I don't need you? Or head telling foot, you're fired, your job has been phased out. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it, in practice, it works the other way. The lower the part, the more basic and therefore necessary. <laughs> He's saying the least, the least complicated parts of you are actually the most important. <laughs> right? He said, you cannot, you can live without an eye, for instance, but not without a stomach. <laughs> when it's a part of your own body, you're concerned with, it makes no difference whether the part is visible or clothed, higher or lower. You give it dignity and honor just as it is without comparisons. You know, I don't go around thinking, oh, my eyes are so great. Forget you, foot. <laughs> I don't, it's all part of my body. I want them all there intact, <laughs> right? right? He's saying, you don't, you don't compare your own pieces of the body. If anything, you have more concern for the lower parts than the higher. If you had to choose, wouldn't you prefer good digestion to a full, a full, to full bodied hair? Wouldn't you want to be able, right, <laughs> okay? <laughs> the way God designed our bodies is a model for understanding our lives together as a church or as a business, as this collective, right? Every part dependent on every other part. The parts we mention and the parts we don't. The parts we see and the parts we don't. If one part hurts, if one part uh, hurts, every other part is involved in the hurt and in the healing. It's accelerate, isn't it? Every other part, we, this, this open space in which we can bear who we are, we all hold that for somebody and help in the healing. I guess that's why they call holistic medicine holistic. Very true. Very true. If one part flourishes, every other part enters into exuberance. So we are all dependent on each other. So let's, let's, um, we're going to now look at a couple of these. We're going to look at some of the scriptures that define the gifts. So what he's talking about here is God is painting this picture of why all pieces and parts are necessary. Why we are not to compare with each other of what each other brings to the table, but that what we do, the way he, he created us, that combination of gifts and talents that he gives us, is for, a, is for the collective, is for the group, 
he's ex he, he's put us in for the magnification of the church or him in other words right so we're going to stay with first corinthians 12 and i'm going to pop up now to 4 through 11 okay and this is still in the message translation it says god's various gifts are handed out everywhere but they all originate in God's spirit. God's various gifts are handed out everywhere, but they all come from the same spirit. Various ministries are carried out everywhere, but they all originate in God's spirit. God's various expressions of power are in action everywhere, but God himself is behind it all. Each person is given something to do that shows who God is. Each person is given something to do that shows who God is. Everyone gets in on it and everyone benefits. All kinds of things are handed out by the spirit to all kinds of people. The variety is wonderful. Wise counsel, okay, that's a gift. Clear understanding, that's a gift. Simple trust, that's a gift healing the sick that's a gift miraculous acts gift proclamation gift distinguishing between spirits gifts tongues interpretation of tongues gifts all these gifts have common have a common origin but are handed out one by one by the spirit of god he decides who gets what and when so he's saying these are a variety of gifts here, and, and we're, we'll look at them in a different, you know, in different translation also, and there's others. There's a variety of gifts, and he says, and the spirit is the origin of them all, and the spirit determined who gets what and when you get it. There may be times where you are operating in something for a specific season, and he doesn't have you operating in that later on down the road, right? You know, there, there, so it's a combination, it's constantly changing. <laughs> you know, it's constantly on the move according to your assignment, which is beautiful, <laughs> which is beautiful. Right. So let's, let's go to, let's see. Uh, hmm. Trying to see what I want to go to next. Let's look at Romans um, 12 and 4 through 8. And I'm going to go to the Passion Translation first. Romans 12, 4 through 8 in the Passion. It says, in the human body, there are many parts and organs, each with a function, a, a unique function. And so it is in the body of Christ. For though we are many, we've all been mingled into one body in Christ. This means that we are all vitally joined to one another with each contributing to the others. God's marvelous grace imparts to each one of us varying gifts. So if God has given you the grace gift of prophecy, okay, that's a gift, activate your gift by using the proportion of faith you have to prophesy. If your grace gift is serving, then thrive in serving others well. So serving is a gift. Prophecy is a gift. If you have the grace gift of teaching, then be actively teaching and training others. Teaching is a gift. If you have the grace gift of encouragement, then use it often to encourage others. If you have the grace gift of giving to meeting the needs of others, then you may prosper in your generosity without any fanfare. If you have the gift of leadership, be passionate about your leadership. If you have the gift of showing compassion, then flourish in your cheerful display of compassion. The, that, or, 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 it's, or mercy is called in some translations. So these are all gifts, mercy, prophecy, leadership, helping, serving others. These are all gifts, gifts of the spirit. 
and you can have multiple of them and they are they empower you to be the light they empower you to serve others they're there for a reason and they function not just in the church is not just for the church arena that these gifts translate into business because here again we all in business operate as one because we're all fed from the one spirit okay um it romans we're going to look at the same pat same one i'm just going to go four through six though in the message translation it's just interesting how it puts this okay <laughs> Romans 12, four through six in the message. It says, in this way, we are like the various parts of a human body. Each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not the other way around. The body we're talking about is Christ's body of chosen people. So that's not just church, that's everywhere. The body we're talking about is Christ's body of chosen people. Are we one, everybody on here one of those? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. Each of us finds our meaning and function as a part of his body, but as a chopped off finger or a cut off toe, we wouldn't amount to much, would we? Individually, he's saying a chopped off finger, a cut off toe. If you are apart from the body, what can you really do on your own? So since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently formed and marvelously functioning parts of Christ's body, let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other or trying to be something we aren't. <laughs> I don't have to be something I'm not because there's another part of the body that fits that. I can just soar in what I am. That's what he's saying here. If you preach, just preach God's message, nothing else. If you help, just help, but don't take over. <laughs> okay. He <laughs> like, says, if you teach, stick to your teaching. If you give encouraging guidance, be careful that you don't get bossy. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> If you're put in charge, don't manipulate. If you're called to give aid to people in distress, keep your eyes open and be quick to respond. If you work with the disadvantaged, don't let yourself get irritated with them or depressed by them. Keep a smile on your face. <laughs> So this is, this is a very, we are unique. We are each unique in our own respect. We are every one of us and a, a, a reflection of God in some capacity. And he's pulled us all together to work as one unit, to bring more people into his body, to showcase who he really is. And so um, the, this one, let's look at 1 Corinthians 12, 27 through 31. Okay. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 through 31. Okay. You are Christ's body. That's who you are. You must never forget this. Only as you accept your part of the body does your part mean anything. <laughs> it's like, understand who you are and play that part. And until you accept who you are, it's not, you're not going to see the fullness of who you are. You're familiar with some of the parts that God has formed in his church, which is his body. And so this is now talking apostles, prophets, teachers, miracle workers, healers, helpers, organizers, those who pray in tongues. But it's obvious by now, isn't it, that Christ's church is a complete body and not a gigantic, undimensional part. 
It's not all apostle, not all prophet, not all miracle worker, not all healer, not all prayer in tongues, not all interpreter of tongues. And yet some of you keep competing for so-called important parts, but now I want to lay out a far better way for you. <laughs> so he says there, everybody is not everything. And that is good. And your part of who you are is important. And he's saying the better way to go to, to work through this is to work together and bring your part to the table. And don't think that because, you know, like a, a lot of people, I get this a lot that, that I think, what does Dre say? Um, my wordsmith, he calls me his wordsmith, right? So that I, I have a way of speaking. I have a way of, that's something that the Holy Spirit speaks through me. That's just part of what he designed, how he designed me. But that doesn't make me better at being able to give a presentation than somebody, you see what I'm saying? Who doesn't? He's like, we're not all the same thing. And no one thing that you are is better than the other, meaning that no one talent that you have is going to make you more successful and you not more, not as successful. Like just because you don't have that talent does not mean you don't win. And a lot of times we're easy, we look at other people and their talents and their gifts that they operate in and think, oh, that's why they're so successful. Well, bottom line is that's how they were designed to function. And yes, it's supposed to make them successful, but you were designed to function in a whole nother way that is also designed to make you successful because all of us were supposed to be able to come together for the same goal. Amen. Amen. So that's the introduction. <laughs> okay. I appreciate the clapping hand, Stephanie. <laughs> you know, um, last, last scripture I'm going to go to, and then I'm going to give you guys some homework. All right. Um, none of these gifts work outside of love. Okay, none of these gifts work outside of love. First Corinthians 13, one through three. And this is the passion translation. And it says, if I were to speak with eloquence in earth's many languages and in the heavenly tongues of angels. So he's talking about a gift here, a spiritual gift, tongues. Okay, if I were to speak with with all of that, it says, yet I didn't express myself with love. My words would be reduced to the hollow sound of nothing more than a clanging cymbal. So he's saying, what gift, what, what good is it to have this gift and not operate in love? And if I were to have the gift of prophecy with a profound understanding of God's hidden secrets, and if I possessed unending supernatural knowledge, and if I had the greatest gift of faith that could move mountains, but have never learned to love, then I am nothing. And if I were to be so generous as to give away everything I own to feed the poor and to offer my body to be burned as a martyr without the pure motive of love i would gain nothing of value so we have to understand that these gifts that god is pulling out through you the foundation has to be love as he as we talked about before love for my brother that's a fundamental love for myself for my community for him these are fundamentals and these, these gifts must operate through that first and foremost. So, um, man, yeah. Okay. <laughs> there we go. We, we got it started. We got it started. Okay. And so the last thing that I'm going to, to do with you guys is I'm going to share with you a, um, it's an assessment. Okay, and it'll be some homework. Um, we just come back with it. You know, it only it literally only takes about 10 minutes to, to take this assessment. Okay, but it's kind of twofold. It is what's called the personality 
test through DISC, D-I-S-C, if any of you guys have ever heard of that. And then is it is a spiritual gifts assessment. Okay, it can be, I'm, I'm gonna give you a QR code and um, uh, that you can either, I'm gonna show that to you now, either you can take a screenshot of that or I'm going to also drop it in the chat. Give me one second. Can y'all see the QR code? Uh oh, hold on, let me move it because I can't see my other stuff. Okay, uh, uh oh, all right. Yeah, you got it up, I got it already on my phone. Okay, so we can perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so now I'm also going to put the, um, put the thing in the chat, I hope. It'll never wanna do right. My chat button, <laughs> come on now. Uh, okay, let's go back here. How about that? Okay. Nope. Let's go here. All right. If you want to text it to me and then I'll put it in the chat. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, because this is ridiculous. Okay. Yeah. We know what your gift is, Mr. Don. Right. And it wasn't imparted early at all. You know, you just really <laughs> grown into this gift. I'm proud of you, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> well bless the lord i'm part of the body this is my that's part right. <laughs> that's right okay let's see um okay there you are <laughs> can i even find him on the thing okay there we go all right so then that is um the website for it and it has 92 questions okay but like i said it only took you about 10 minutes and some of the uh, here, I'm going to stop that share. I'm going to share this one. So this is what it looks like. And this comes from Church of the Highlands. I mean, I know there's a lot of ver versions of this, but um, this is just an easy one that, you know, kind of it goes through and does both things. So it will give you the assessment, the personality assessment, as well as the spiritual gifts assessment and what your what your highest spiritual gifts are, okay? Because it's not it, it'll probably give you about three or four different spiritual gifts. But um, and again, this is not don't take this as this is all inclusive, okay? And in that it this is going to point you in the direction though, and and a lot of it is something you probably already kind of felt like, but maybe not for sure because again, we don't really. Uh, you know, always talk about this so much in understanding. Some people have never even been exposed to what their spiritual gift is. So I just want to make sure that everybody had an opportunity to explore that as we move forward. So um, as we start talking about this more um, next week, we'll talk more about the individual spiritual gifts. And I'd love to hear, you know, what some of the results are that you guys have gotten. And we'll just talk about how those translate into this, the, this arena, into this marketplace and how those make you, you, you unique, okay? So um, again, and there's some rules they have up here. You know, don't just go with your first gut. Don't try to censor your answers because, you know, they'll ask you questions like, do you care, you know, about praying for other people? And if you don't have a desire, if that burning desire to pray for other people isn't in you, even though it sounds polite to say, yes, it is, don't answer yes, okay? <laughs> it's okay nobody's gonna see that except for you all right it's again just trying to pull out what is your area what's yours and there are people who are called to pray for the world okay they're called to pray for other that's what they do but it may not be you and that's okay um it says pick your environment that means that um you know, you can compartmentalize. You might be one way when you're at church and you're one way when you're at home and you're one way in the business. Pick your environment that you're most often in. And that's probably going to be your home or your business life and answer according to how you would answer in that environment. That's what it's saying. And some of the questions are going to say that's so that you can get consistency in your answers. All right. Um, some of the questions might ask something like, you know, do you enjoy starting churches? Okay, well, think about it in terms of do you store, enjoy starting new teams? Like, do you like getting new teammates going? Okay, that's how you can, can look at those answers. Um, it's not just specific to church, although this 
exercise was designed to be that way. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so yeah. And um, yeah. So everybody got that? Um, I'm looking at the app. I don't see where the assessment is being. Am I looking at the right thing? Is um, that home? Okay, what page are you on? What what because if it if it takes you to there if it takes you to something that says um hold on let me go. On mine it has Highlands Growth Track and then when you scroll down there's four blue tabs. Right. Right. Click on there's four blue tabs there. Click on the one that says personality assessment. Okay, I downloaded it and, and I I'm on home and it just gives me a group of Find a service, join a small group, give, okay. connect, growth track is one of them. Okay, and click, on, says, click on growth track. So it sounds like, so you downloaded the app. You didn't have to necessarily download the app. I don't know why it took you there. Um, but is that where you went to, Linda? So what I did is Don put it in the chat and in the chat, I clicked on it, immediately opened up in a different tab and then I saved it in my favorite and it's exactly what you're looking at. So I don't, I don't know how to scroll through all that stuff. So yeah, that I just, when he puts that in there, if you click on it, it'll immediately take you to the front page that Jacinda was talking about. And so I have it saved and I could take the assessment after. Okay, okay I'll just do it that way. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure why it made you. I'm not tech that. savvy. I just <laughs> when somebody gives me, I just I, I I'm a dip, yeah. I just click. <laughs> yeah, that's how. I do it. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. All righty, y'all. Well, this is going to be exciting adventure. I can't wait. I can't wait. Amen. All right. Amen. Then I do want to comment about what you spoke about today, honey. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so. I think today's um what you talked about it it, it explains us mm -hmm. it explains the accelerate tribe to the T mm -hmm. and I love it I love it and um I also have, well well I get to coach with you after because you know <laughs> I can't hold water when it comes to y'all if y'all would understand my devotion time with the Lord this morning and what when I say he's so intentional so intentional on what it is that he wants us to know when he wants us to know it and when he lets you know so clearly what you are to do when you're working for him it not only mean working for him but just you know just moving with them and I ask him co I even wrote the word cohesively because there's times that I, um, you know how I always tell y'all, I was like, look, I invite the spirit of the living God in every day. Well, he had me talk. He was like, look, child, I'm here. He <laughs> said, so when you invite me in, rise me up because I'm already here. And I was like, just the little things of how we talk to him and what we're asking him about. And then he brought me back to declaring and decreeing. He was like, baby. And, and he, we've been on this gift journey. Um, just, and come in here today, mm -hmm. just speaking on gifts. Right. And I mean it. Yeah. I get so excited because he he's moving and he's just, Oh, all right, but look, great job. I love it. <laughs> I love the anointing and I love how he lets us know every single thing, the little things. So mm -hmm. praise God, y'all, on our gifts and just being able to allow him to work through each and every one of them. Ah! Mm -hmm. He ain't putting us more special in you <laughs> than he put in me. All of us have it. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lakina, could you get a little bit more excited, please? I mean, I try. <laughs> I'm trying to get on that hey. Miss Anel level. <laughs> <laughs> I got one more question. Miss Daphne got yet another instrument. I what's, what's the Girl, I will yet praise him, okay? <laughs> I need me something in my, I need to get some stuff in my office now. And I'm not playing, y'all. I, I bought TJ something from Morocco. I, I haven't even been to Morocco, so that was about to be a lie, but somewhere in Cancun, I mean, I've been there. And it was this little drum. I'm going to find that drum. I'm to Take them out. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Miss Michonne. 
Hey, everybody. I just wanted to say that I enjoy this um, session. I'm excited about it. And um, we did this um, some years ago um, in, in church at a um, leadership session. And I was excited about it then. Yeah. And I'm excited about doing this test again, too. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to show, you know, how um, your, your personality is also into this and how people act react or react the way that they do um based on um how the tests come out which also will come out in your appointments and how you deal with your recruits so yeah this will be really good so i took this back in 2017 so okay. i'm kind of i'm kind of anxious to see if anything changes <laughs> amen amen awesome 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 all right anybody else want to add anything off. Yeah, I, I am. I, I'm just tickled. I mean, I was just tickled when God started because, you know, again, I, I was sharing with you guys even, I don't know, yesterday, the day before, whatever, about how I've been so busy on the pieces, you know, just doing the pieces that he's had me do. And, you know, with Start and Accelerate, the stuff we do for coaching and the team and the system, you know, I've just been working on pieces. And, and it's like, he just sneaks up on me and be like, yep, and this is how that fits together. That fits together. You know, it's not been like one sit down hole. And I've been, and I have been asking him, I'm like, Lord, show me how all this fits. And I'm going to share something with y'all in 60 more days. Okay. <laughs> okay. That, um, that, that this, you know, that started this whole thing, but, um, but I've been asking, look, you know, show me how all of this fits together, because I, I know the pieces. I just don't see, you know, and we talked about that with Noah's Ark, you know, with the art, the pi being a pioneer of something, being, you know, building something that you really don't have a blueprint for. And I've been in, in the middle of that. <laughs> and so literally he started talking to me about this just late last night. I was not for sure what we were going to be doing today. <laughs> <laughs> and um and and I was like well that's good you know I definitely want to talk about these gifts but as he started pulling it all together of the body and what the body looks like and how it's supposed to function and he's like mm -hmm, see <laughs> I told you I was doing something <laughs> right? it's like oh okay this is how this all fits <laughs> you know it's it's mm -hmm. I love him I love him <laughs> Go ahead, Miss Myra. I like. I just want to say praise the Lord for this call. You know, uh, it's just so beautiful, and the reason being, because I just feel like a peace mm -hmm. now with this message. It uh, God has let me know that I'm part of a whole, mm -hmm. even though I feel like a speck of peace. And half the time, I wonder what in the world I'm doing. You know, but now through this message, I see the bigger picture and it's really been a blessing for me. And I'm excited about doing uh, this assessment to see what yeah. God has to say. Yeah. <laughs> Love you all. Amen. Thank you so much. Love you too, honey. Love you too. Hey, Miss Mara, I tell you this, I I know you are, you are a good piece because I always enjoy when you come on. I mean, <laughs> I don't, I don't, if, even if you just come on and just say, I, I just want to praise the Lord. I just love that. You know, I mean, this is awesome. This is awesome. Amen. But yeah, I, I, I agree. You know, I'm I'm looking at the, you know, you got the um the all the squares and you can see people and stuff of like that. And I immediately think of the Brady Bunch, you know, and you know, we're, you know looking up and looking down, <laughs> you know, and I mean it, it's awesome that we're a family. Mm -hmm. Just like the Brady Bunch. They came together, different families. They came together to make one family. And that's what God, oh man, that's what God is doing right here. Or what God done. He's brought, he's brought, yes. he's brought this body together. Yes. And guess what? This body is part of the body mm -hmm. of the, the body. And we're all, we're all wanting to reach the same goals and, and so this is this is just this is just awesome. This and and it really awesome. it, it really is a distinguishing because I never, you know, just like I was saying to you guys before, I never thought about what a difference this is from the normal environment of growing a business, you know, of just 
the collective working together versus this individuality. And, I, you know, it just, it never occurred to me of being something, not saying wrong with it, but it wasn't God's design. It's not his perfect design, you know, and that this is the difference in that. And um, he brought me back to something, again, I have been speaking, I, I have spoken started years ago, and I've shared this with you before, you know, I told you guys the what, you know, I gave you those things that I had been speaking, but one of the things that I said was that we're going to build a business unlike anything Primerica has ever seen. <laughs> it's going to be different, you know, and I did, and even in saying that I had had no idea what that was going to mean I just knew it had to be different because he said do this the way I want it done <laughs> and to the center uh -huh. before I even came and partnered with you all before we even came on y'all calls I used to always say that too mm, always amen. said it amen oh now amen and, and I and Gerardica could contest to it I used to be like I want to build this business where nobody could take it away because mm -hmm. God, you know, mm -hmm. but I also said that I want this business to function to the point where when people come into our organization, nobody knows who's the leader because it's just, we, we move cohesively, but yet we have all our different talents and always wanting to put your people with certain people because not everybody's personalities for everybody, mm -hmm. but when you can, come on now, I'm yeah. feeling them. Yes. I was going to jump, but Terrell was on a meeting earlier. <laughs> y'all listen and let me stop recording here because i'm i'm going to um